So for today, we're doing a little uh, uh, introduction to radians, and I'd like you to go to this page right here. What in the world is a radian? Well, I think you guys know that this right, for example, would be about a 30 degree angle. All right, if I make it like this, that would for sure be a 90 degree, well, at least if I mark it that way, that would be a 90 degree angle. And a 180 degree angle is like an angle that is open exactly all the way, so to speak. That'd be 180. Are you with me so far? Degrees. Does you get degrees? Okay. There's another way to measure angles, and that's with radians. And a radian is about that big. How well, big is about that big? Well, that's about 60 degrees. But it's not exactly 60 degrees, and I'm going to show you why. If it was exactly 60 degrees, would you agree that if I made three of them, it would make 180? 60 plus 60 plus 60 would make 180, right? But three radians doesn't end right here. This is not where three radians is. So this is not exactly 60 degrees, and it's weird that it would be off of something, but so close to 60. So here's why. These Skittles here, draw around one and then make a copy of that so that you can like paste it over and over and over again. Now my Skittles are going to go around here and make a total of, well, there should be seven to get to the middle, like that. We start right at the middle, it should be seven Skittles wide. Go ahead and do that. Now, if we made it have seven Skittles to go that way, then I'd like you to think about if you were going to make this be 60 degrees, wouldn't it be seven Skittles going straight like this? Seven, seven, and seven. Think of how that would make a perfect triangle where all the angles are 60. Does that make sense to you? And I just screwed up my last skittle here, so I'm going to make this better. So that would be a 7 and 7 and 7, and then the angles would all be 60. All right. But what we want to do is we're going to shorten this up just a little bit, because if we go 7 skittles this way around the curve... Do you get it won't go quite as far? That's what a radian is. It didn't go as far because it's going around a curve. And a curve is not the shortest distance between these two points. So this is 7, and this is 7, and this is 7, and that right there is not 60 degrees then. Do you, do you get how it's a little less than 60? because we're going on a curve instead of a straight line. See, if it had been a straight line of the same exact seven, then, then this would have been pushed up a little further. Okay, now I'm not gonna torture you with making all of them, but if you made all of them all the way around here, well, do you get six times three would have been eight? Uh, no, seven, so sorry, I have a seven on each side. Seven times. 3 would be 21, but it doesn't end up being 21. It ends up taking 22 Skittles this way. Okay, and then you end up with this magical number 22 sevenths. Does anybody know what that is? Yes. Does it have to do with pi? It is pi. Now, it's the closest thing that you can get to pi. It's the closest fraction you can get because it ends up being 3.14 and it's just not exactly right for pi. And why is that? Because this is just a made-up example with Skittles. 
okay? But in the real world, uh, it's not three of these 60 plus 60 plus 60. It's a little tiny bit more. It's 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus a little tiny bit more. So it's not just three, it's 3.14 radians to get to this edge here. You get how it's a little bit more than three? And if it's a little bit more than three, it ends up being instead of just seven plus seven plus seven, it'd be 21 over seven. The so radius is seven. It ends up being more than 21. It ends up being 22 Skittles, which is 22 sevenths, which is 3.14. Okay, so I was saying all of that just to try to give you a reason to understand that this spot here is 180 degrees. You already knew that. But it's also 3.14 radians to there. Not 3, 3.14, which is actually pi. So that spot on the circle is pi radians. All right. So would you please draw a circle for me? We are going to label some really important spots. 180. This is where 90 is. Remember, we're always starting with a line like right there. Would you agree that 45 is probably a big deal? It's like halfway to 90. OK. And then 60 is probably a big deal. You remember the 30, 60, 90 triangle? How 60 ended up being a big deal because of that? And last but not least, we have halfway to 60, which would be 30 degrees. 30, 60, 90, and 45. And 180 is also a big deal. Okay, label all those spots. And this is really important now. Do you remember that 180 goes with pi? Pi and 180. Get them together in your head. Because then this is 30 out of 180. It's 1 pi over 6. It's 1 sixth of the way to pi. This is the easier one. Would you agree this is halfway to pi? So therefore, 1 pi over 2? I mean... This is important that you understand. If I put one half pi, that would be the exact same thing as pi over two, right? Okay. So that's half pi. So everybody gonna write these now on the inside here. This is pi over six. This is pi over two, halfway to pi. This one's pi. What's 45 then? Is 45 halfway to pi? No, no, it's a lot less. Yes? It's one fourth of a pi. Good, but I'm gonna put pi over four, which means the same exact thing as one fourth of the way to pi. How about 60? Yes? Two pi over six or one pi over three. I agree with both of those things. All right, so we have pi, which is pi over 1, mm -hmm. and we have pi over 2, and pi over 3, and pi over 4, and pi over 6. Those are the biggies. The only one we don't use is pi over 5. It's just not useful. It ends up being, well, what's pi? It's 180. So as soon as I want to know one, if I can just keep going that pi is 180, do you get if I can just kind of replace this with 180? It's like 180 divided by 6, which is 30. See? If pi is like 180, which it is because of this, then this one's like 180 goes in here, and I can just quickly go, oh, that's 180 divided by 3 is 60. See? All right. So if this is 180, 180 divided by 2 is 90. So how do you do conversions between radians and, and um, degrees? Well, how do you get these again? Well, if you had pi over 6, everybody write down pi over 6, please. You would need to multiply by a fact to change it from radians, which is what it is right now. This is radians, into degrees. Wait, 
Uh, it's not, that's not what I'm going to get next. What I'm going to get at the end is degrees. Half my job for today is to teach you what radians are. And my other half of my job is to help you use radians to do a couple of things. You're going to use radians to get things changed over from radians to degrees. Or from degrees to radians. And you're going to have to do simple things like find an area of a sector of a circle. Sector of a circle looks kind of like this. And if I say, here, this is one radian right there, you have to be able to tell me how much of the circle you have. And it's a fraction of the circle. And it's not hard, but I'll show you that more in a second. There's my big picture for what I'm trying to teach you. Radians, remember how I said that 180 is like pi? Well, here's what you do. You put 180 here and a pi down there. Because would you agree that 180 is pi? It's the same exact thing, 180 is pi. So when I multiply by that, I'm really multiplying by one, right? 180 is a pi, they're the same thing, so I'm really multiplying by one. But it changes it into, cancel the pi's, 180 over six, which is 30. So that's how you change things back and forth. So what gets weirder is when I say, like, okay, so what's 5 pi over 4? And you're like, well, I, uh, that's weird. But if you just go, it's got to be a 180 and a pi. I put the 180 here and I put the pi there. You're always just going to make sure these cancel each other. And then you can say, well, it's 5 times 180 divided by 4. Get how that worked? You're just going to multiply by 180 over pi or pi over 180 to convert it. It's a little bit like if I had, uh, I measured my height and I was 20, uh, no, 123 inches tall. Okay, that's very tall. And I was like, well, I really would like to know what this is as a normal person would say it, which is in feet and inches. And then I could multiply by something. I'd put inches down here so that they would cancel, you know. What's a fact I know about inches? 12 makes a foot. And see how that's... A fact, one inch is, or one foot is 12 inches. And then I realize, oh, so I take 123 divided by 12. What is 123 divided by 12? It's 10.25. It's 10.25. I'm apparently 10 feet tall. Probably measured wrong. All right. Do you get how you can multiply by facts? This is a fact. One foot, 12 inches. And if these are the same, you're multiplying by one. That's why you can do it. Because you're multiplying by one, you're just changing it to not be any bigger, but in different units. Okay, so back to my degrees radians thing. What if instead I have uh, 225 degrees? To you and me, that normally would just be like some random number of degrees, but it's not. It's actually a very exact place in radians. So let's change that. So what do you think I'm gonna multiply by? Well, be careful. There's a pi and a 180, and I'm gonna put it this way, and I know why I put it that way. Do you know why I put it that way? Yes, Mr. T. Because um, you like you have to reverse it when you're converting it back. Yeah, you do have to reverse it, but if I just said, I don't remember what I had done first. I hit this problem first on the test and I have to change it, there's nothing for me to reverse. I can just put the degrees on the bottom to cancel the degrees on the top. That's why. Okay, so now the degrees will cancel. And my answer is 225 pi over 180. But that doesn't seem right. It's probably just because it isn't reduced. And what's my favorite saying of all? If you can factor it, you should. And so I'm going to factor this into... Well, what do they both have? They both definitely have fives in them. So 180 could be five times something. And 225 could be five times something. Anybody, like, think of a different way to do it? Just We just have to reduce some really ugly numbers today, so help me. I'm going to pause this. So what if I just take the calculator and divide these two? Because I'm not coming up with nice numbers just, you know, in my head. Well, I get 1.25 pi. Can you, do you know how to take that 
1.25 on your calculator and change it into a fraction? It's under math. Everybody hit the math key. You see the very top thing that comes up when you hit the math key? It says frac. So math, enter, enter. Cool. Five fourths pi. One twenty one point two five is five fourths. So that's five pi over four. Now if I wanted to do it the other way and I wanted to do two twenty five and see how many times five went in there, it was forty five times five over one eighty is thirty six. But most of you aren't just going to be impressed with 45, 36. But do you get that reduces again to a 9 times 5 and a 9 times 4? And look at those cancel. 5 fourths pi. 5 pi over 4. All right. So, everybody, change 135 degrees into radians for me. Hint, you're going to multiply by something, and it has to do with 180, and it has to do with pi, and you just got to put them in the right spots. Samuel, what do you think you're going to multiply by? Uh, pi over 180. All right, and why'd you put the 180 on the bottom? You are right, but what's good about the 180 being on the bottom? Correct. No, not the pi. There was no pi, but there was a degree. And then you could use your calculator and go 135 divided by 180, and you'd get 0.75. Can you do that one in your head? So three-fourths pi. Can you say it like a normal person would say it? Very good. Three pi over four. Really have to get that this is this. All right, cool. Okay, now, the application part. And then we'll just zip through the flat slides really quick once you, I feel like you've got it. Yes? Do we have to memorize the unit circle? Uh, the unit circle is handy to memorize, but it is not something that you have to memorize. Because if you know all your facts, like the 30-60-90 triangle, 45-45-90 triangle, things like that, you can kind of make the unit circle on the go. You don't have to have it memorized. Okay, so back to one last thing I want to teach you, and then I think I can just fly through the rest of the slides. If I was going to say that that's one radian, and this was 10, do you get this is 10 and this is 10 because they're both radiuses? And the last one would also be 10. If this is really one radian right here, is it exactly 60 degrees? No, it's a little less than 60. It's 59 point something, actually. All right, so that's one radian. That's what a radian is, if all those are equal. All right, then I'd like you to figure out the area of the whole circle before we figure out the area of the shaded region. Everybody figure out the area of that circle. Don't overthink this. Hopefully you know the area of the formula. In a moment, I'm going to have you compare with the kid next to you. Pausing. So hopefully you knew that the area for a circle is pi r squared. So the area for this circle is pi times 10 squared, which is 100. So therefore, 100 pi. Now get used to just leaving it that way. You know, the ACT would. It's very unlikely that they would ask you to get a decimal for that because they would give a kid with a calculator. Well, actually, just have it memorized that pi is 3.14 would be pretty easy to do. Uh, but the ACT is likely to just have you leave it as a pi in there because that means any advantage I have in the calculator disappears. Okay, so that's 100 pi. Does he get the area inside here, though, is not 100 pi? It's some fraction of that. Well, it's a radian, though. So you didn't tell me how many degrees, and you've been vague about how it's about 59. Well, then how am I supposed to do it? You go a fraction of that 100 pi. What's the fraction? Is it something out of 360 degrees? No, because we're not using degrees. We're using radians. 
If you were going to say there's 360 degrees, though, would you agree that there's how many radians then? In 360 degrees? All the way around? All the way around? Yes. Two pi. Two pi. And what do we have? One radian out of two pi total. Okay, now, thank you. There's another way to get this. There's another way to get this and it's a little formula that you can just memorize. It's radians. Oh wait, let's, let's just finish this. You gotta have a pi on top, you know, say it's on the top, what do you mean? Well, I can almost put things over one, right? So if there's no denominator, I can just put it over one. And these pies cancel. And what's the answer? 50, 100 divided by 2 is 50. The area of that little circle, sorry, that little triangle was 50. All right. So here's the formula that you need to know then. Some people write it backwards. SR theta or... S equals theta r. Either way works. It's the same exact thing, right? And r is the radius. And theta is the radians. How many radians did we have? One. How long was our radius? Ten. Oh, poop. I just did not figure out the area of the sector. My bad. I figured out how long the arc length was, I'm sorry, that's a different question, but it is kind of also important. Remember me saying that this length was 10? Ooh, I just figured it out mathematically that it had to be 10. That formula I just gave you, I apologize, it was not for the area, it was for the arc length, like how long the arc is. This is how you can find the area of that sector, and its little formula is the radians, over 2 pi times pi r squared. That is the area of a sector. Area of the sector is radians divided by 2 pi times pi r squared. Would those pi's cancel? Absolutely. But I leave it that way just to make sure you understand where it came from. This is a lot like degrees out of 360. I also want to show you this one. Times pi r squared. Because if I had a circle and it was in degrees and it was 60 degrees, which we have established is different than a radian. They're close, but different. And this was, let's say, uh, 10 again. This is going to be very similar to the other one, but a little tiny bit bigger. This sector then would be degrees out of 360, so 60 out of 360, times pi r squared, and r is 10, so 10 squared is 100, so 100 pi. So this would be a very similar answer to our other answer, which was 50, but this will be slightly bigger. And it just ends up being a little messy. So I'm gonna actually get that final answer. This area would be about 52.3. The other one came out to 50. Why is this bigger? Because degrees are bigger. 60 degrees is bigger than a radian. Okay, so to come out of here today, knowing what you're supposed to know, you should be able to do these three things. Number one, if I give you a number of degrees, like, oh, let's use a common one, um, 270 degrees is what in radians? Can you do that? Hint, you're going to multiply by something. It's the fact you know about radians degrees. Number two, 
If I gave you something and said, that's pi over six, AKA, have you memorized it yet? How many degrees is pi over six? If I was only gonna memorize one, I'd memorize that one, yeah, 30. If a kid was gonna get, ask you for like a quick way to do it, I would tell them that pi is 180. Because then as soon as they swap in a 180 right there, they can go 180 divided by six. It's like 18 divided by six, but add a zero. Cool. All right, so then if I asked you what's the area of that part of the circle, well, you'd need to know this. I'm gonna say this is eight. So everybody find me the area of that little wedge of the circle. Hint, leave your answer in pi. And it involves pi r squared, but it involves a fraction in front of pi r squared. And last but not least is same problem, except I want the arc length. The first question was area. The arc length, I'm going to draw that in green. The arc is the little part of the circle. And that's S equals theta R. All right. There. We'll see if you've learned what you were supposed to learn. I'm going to pause while you try these three. Okay, I'm gonna use the dice of destiny to see who you call on here. Oh my goodness. Nolan, I was actually looking at you and I rolled the dice and it rolled a one and a one and that is you. All right, so tell me, what did you multiply your 270 by to be able to get it transformed over? Pi over, Pi over 180 is perfect. And then these cancel and then I'm gonna cancel a zero because it's just 27 over 18 then. And then I'm gonna think nine times three and I'm gonna think nine times two because I like to factor and if you can factor it, you should. And then you get three and a two and a pi. Final answer? Three pi over two. Three pi over two is perfect. Okay, now I wanna like just have you see where that is for a second. Do you guys know a, that 270 would be 90 times three was right there? So 270 is right there. It's like if you started here and you opened up 90 and then you opened up another 90 and you opened up another 90, you've opened up that far. It's this big angle here. That is also three pi over two, AKA 270 degrees. Okay. This one, number two, row three, person two. That's you, Mr. S. How do you do the area of a sector? Radians over 2 pi, perfect, times pi r squared. And then what was the radians in this case? Um, I got pi over 6 over 2 pi. And then I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but if I have pi over 6 divided by 2 pi, that's like times 1 over 2 pi. And then the pi's will cancel. And that's one twelfth of pi r squared. And then what was pi r squared? Can you finish the problem for me? So it's one twelfth of pi r squared is pi times r squared is 64. So really that's like one twelfth of 64 pi. And then if I can take 64 divided by 12, I'm gonna use my calculator. 64 divided by 12 is 5.3. That's weird, 5.3 repeating pi. Isn't that like five and one third pi? Isn't that like 16 pi over three? It is. Now, it depends on the test. If they allow calculators, I would have been okay with that. If they don't allow calculators, then you ended up 16 pi over 3. Which one's more accurate? Well, 
They're kind of the same in this case because we know the decimal goes on forever. But that's cleaner because you don't have any repeating decimal to write. Okay, and then last but not least is the arc length for that little arc. I'm going to redraw the problem, make it less messy. And it was a circle going around like this. And the question was, how long is this little arc right here? And that would be S equals theta R, which is so easy if you know that it's radians and radius. The radius in this circle was 8. So these are both 8. And the radians was pi over 6. That means this little angle here was 30 degrees, but I'm going to use pi over 6. And then I'm going to go radians, pi over 6, times the radius, 8. 8 pi over 6. Could you reduce that? Definitely. And I do expect you to reduce. If you don't reduce, you're going to lose points on the test. Only 5%, but hey, who wants to go from a 95 to a 90? 4 pi over 3. And that's weirdly a distance. Don't get confused on pi's that they're always degrees now because they're not. Pi is 3.14. This means 4 times about 3 and then divided by 3. That means it's a smidge bigger than 4. Because this is like 4 times 3 with a little more. So it's a little more than 12 divided by 3, which is a little more than 4. So that length right there would be a little more than 4. 4 point something. Okay. There now. We're just going to through the slides quick to make sure you get this. Remember me saying that it wasn't just 3 of those. It was 3.14. Pi went with 180. Okay. Next one. Are we expecting you to be able to convert? Yup. If you were going to convert this one, I would put the pi on the bottom. And I put the 180 on the top. Why the pi on the bottom? Because then it'll cancel the other pi. And if you want to have cancel one that has degrees in it, I'd put the 180 on the bottom. So that the degrees will cancel. It's always either 180 over pi or pi over 180. Okay, on the slide, it tells you this formula I talked about. Okay. And uh, this is just the arc length formula written out in a different way where you take, yeah, I don't like that way right now. I, I think we don't need to have another way to find the arc length. This is so clean and beautiful, S equals R theta. Super simple formula. Radians times radius. That's the radian. No, radius, and that's the radians. All right, moving on. Uh, area of a sector, that's this one. The radians over 2 pi times pi r squared. And I did a practice with you already, so I'm not going to make you practice more. This is the part where you should get into the homework. This I'm not thrilled about, but I think you should do at least one of them. So they want you to get radians, and they want you to use a calculator and get them in, you know, hundredths. Okay, so just to clarify, that's two decimal places. So I'm going to do number one with you and then number two also, but we're going to skip these two. Can you have negative angles? Yes, and let's just talk about it for a second. A negative angle goes around the other way. That's what a negative angle does. It still starts here, but instead it swings that way. Okay, so negative angles just go the different direction. All right, if we're going to do 63.75 degrees, what did I tell you to do to get these converted over? Well, you multiply by 180 over pi or pi over 180. Those are your only two choices. Sammy, which one are we going to do here? Pi over 180 or 180 over pi? And why did you know with confidence? Yep, degrees will cancel. We had to do it that way. Okay, good. And then you just use a calculator and you get that decimal. All right, I want you to do one and two on that page. Next page. These are super important. you got to get how to change radians to degrees. That's going to happen a ton. We're going to do all three of those. You just multiply by 180 over pi or pi over 180. And if you just memorize it, like the first one, can you, did you memorize that pi is what? It's 180 at the end. If 
you like, but, but can't you just do the times by thing? Sure. Times by 180 over pi. And then, boom, it's 180. Okay. All right, so definitely do those. And here is the meat of it where you got to already understand what radians are and what the radius would look like. And radians at pi over 6 is about a 30-degree angle, so I draw it like that. And then they want two things. S, which is the sarc. It's the arc length. Why do they pick S for that? I have no idea, and I hate it. I really wish it's, it was called A for arc length, but S is your arc length. All right, and then the area of the sector. So those are the two things that I taught you. This one's that radians over 2 pi times pi r squared. Okay, I think you should do two of them. I don't think you need three, so we'll skip that one. And then this is actually really fascinating. So I'm going to actually say you need to do this one and you can look at the answer. But imagine a rope tied all the way around the earth. And first of all, I think we should do it. Can you imagine being able to walk up to the rope that is tied all the way around the earth? It'd be sloshing around in the ocean at some point. Wouldn't that be just fascinating to be able to go up to this rope and grab it? And know there's other people around the world that might be grabbing it. I think it's pretty awesome. Anyway, so imagine a rope that goes all the way around the earth and they say how long it is. Do you get that's basically a giant circle? The rope is in a giant circle, isn't it? All right. And then if you grabbed it and you wanted to lift it up one foot above the ground. If you wanted the rope to be able to, you know, if it's tight to the earth, if it's like right on the ground, you could get your fingers under it maybe, but that's it. And then you couldn't lift it up. How much length would you have to add to your rope to make it so you can lift it up a foot? I think this is a really good question for bright kids. And I know you guys are mostly bright, so try to figure it out. You maybe like need to draw pictures and go, okay, well, then all of a sudden my radius is different, but wait, how can I... Now this is, if people around the whole world were going to lift it up one foot. You know what I mean? Like everybody's, there's people around the whole world and they're all going to grab it and they're going to lift it up. People out in the ocean and boats, they're lifting it up a foot. Okay, so it's an imaginary foot and it seems like you'd need a ton more rope. And, but you figure it out. All right. So that's it. We made it through today's lesson. And uh, tomorrow, we are taking a top 20. So if you've never seen them before, you can get a free look at AlgebraNinja.com. And I'm going to be able to go into conferences being able to say, here's where they are on their basics. We just took a fresh top 20. Some of you guys may have gotten 20 before, but you're only going to get 17 this time because you forgot some things. All right. So if you want to pre-study, it's totally okay. The question is, how well did you know your basics early this week and then next week? Sorry, this Friday, conferences. Even Thursday night, I have some then, too. And a lot of your parents have signed up, I've seen. Okay, that's all I got for you for the video for today.